Oh, you guys, welcome back for the last two questions. Um, question number six, it says, the time T minutes taken by 150 students to complete a particular challenge are summarized in the following cumulative frequency table. Guys, you need to know, note it down that this is a cumulative frequency table, not a frequency table, okay? It is a cumulative frequency table, so you need to underline this cumulative frequency table, okay? So uh, when you have to draw this cumulative frequency graph, you need to have the cumulative frequency rather than the, the normal frequency. Uh, there is one problem with this, that the graph should start with the frequency zero. So you can assume that there is one more group over here where when you know this is going to be for time less than or equal to zero, you have the frequency as zero. Okay? Achha. After that, you have to scale, uh, like, you know, look at this, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 centimeters here. And you have to show uh, from 0 to 100. So maybe you can take at, like, you know, your, your scale can be 1 centimeter for 10 minutes. You have to mention that scale. This is going to be for the horizontal axis. Okay. And then on the vertical axis, you have to show the cumulative frequency. And this is going to go to up to 150. And let's see how many centimeters do we have here. So this is, um, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I, I believe there will be more than that. Um, if I just minimize this. Yeah. So I think the scale would be the same for the... Uh, for your vertical axis that this can be, be for the vertical axis you can have um, one centimeter and you can show 10 what do we have 10 uh, students okay so one centimeter you have 10 students as so once you have taken the scale then you have to mark the points like you know 0 0 20 comma 12 and once you have done that i'm going to do it i'm going to use the answer from here so you will have a curve like this okay uh, you can draw a graph as well if you want okay or you can draw a curve if you want you can so there will be a curve like this you can see that at the bottom here this has been taken as like zero and then this is going up to um, 100 over here, okay, from 0 to 100, and this will go from 0 to 150 up to this. Asha, now let's look at the questions here. It says in the first part that 24% of the students take K minutes or longer. Now, guys, this is your graph or something like this, okay? So let me just draw it like this, okay? This is your 150 over here. And here you have 100. Okay. It says 24% uh, of the students take K minutes or longer. Use your graph to estimate the value of K. Now, these 24% of the students, are these going to be at the top of the, this curve or at the bottom of the curve? And how do we decide that? Hurry up, tell me quickly. Would that be the upper 24% or the lower 24%? Sir, upper. Yeah, because it says longer, okay? So if we take upper 24%, uh, that means if you calculate 76% of the total frequency, which is 150, 76% hmm? of 150, that is going to be uh, 114. So this means if you find a value against this 114 here, the value against this 114 over here is going to be the value of K. So this is your K. I believe you will be able to find that. And I can show you the answer from here. Yeah, this is going to be K will be 45 minutes. Okay? So K is going to be 45 minutes. I have explained you how to do that. Achha. The next part, it says, um, 
calculate an estimate of the mean and the standard deviation the mean and the standard deviation okay for this purpose um, you you will have to show all that working bacho so i'll be using this area over here uh, we have this table here okay now this one is the cumulative frequency table you need to have the uh, frequency distribution basically the group frequency distribution for this so let me cover all of this okay there are six marks for this so you have to show all that table okay let me start it from here so that we can do the working okay i need a form so this is for the totals okay the frequency here the mid values i think this is it the thing is that the formula you must remember you can see that from the uh, formula booklet as well the mean is going to be sigma fx over sigma f and then the standard deviation is going to be the square root of sigma fx squared over sigma f minus mean square acha so you will be writing the times here the times taken okay so i'll be writing this as from 0 to 20 then from 20 to 30 then from 30 to 40 then from 40 to 60 and then from 60 to 100 this is for the sum here okay then i'll have here the frequency that is going to be given that is given to us we have to find basically through this we will be going reverse now this is going to be 12 over here guess what will be the frequency here yes 36 up, yeah up to 20 they were 12 up to 30 they are 48 so this has to be 36 hai na 42 minus this one and 106 minus 48 gives us 58 50 thank you beta and 134 minus 106 is going to be 28 28 and 150 minus 134 is going to give us 16 hai na and all this total is has to be 150 Now, when you find this mean, and you have a group frequency distribution here, so you need to calculate the mid values. So this is going to be the mid values here, and those which would be mentioned as x. Okay, now so the mid values are going to be ten, twenty-five, thirty-five, and this is fifty, and this one is eighty. We don't need to have its sum here. This is not required, but you will be needing this f x. ठीक है ना and then you will find x square for this to be used this is sigma fx square and then you will have fx square let's find that quickly so this is how you complete this table and then your mean is going to be sigma fx which is 5730 divided by 150 so divided 38.2 this is 38.2 that is these many minutes okay and your standard deviation is going to be sigma fx square that is 267150 over sigma f which is 150 minus mean acha if you have written this value here though this was um, an exact value so try to use the exact value here while finding the standard deviation so what is the standard deviation bachcho Hmm. Did you find that? There is seventeen point nine four. Seventeen point nine. So that is the approximate value of the standard deviation. So you have to show all this working, but so this one is optional. If you can directly find f x square, but you have to show f x square. You have to show this f x, the mid values, and obviously all of this. Acha. Next, we move on to the last question. Then, uh, okay, here is the last question. 
it is on uh, permutation and combination, your favorite question, okay? Find the number of different ways in which 10 letters of the word shopkeeper can be arranged. So all three E's are together. As a right now we have, there are three E's in it and there are two P's in it. And then other letters, there are five. Okay. Sir, there are three P's. Hmm? Three yes. P's. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. So it says find the number of different ways it can be arranged. All three E's are together. So now we're taking these three E's as one unit, all three E's. And then um, there's seven more letters, okay? So all together, eight units have to be uh, permutated. And this is divided by two factorial. That is because of the two P's. So that is the answer to this, uh, um, this part A. Okay, you can simplify this. This is eight factorial divided by two factorial. This is 20,160. 20,160. Quick check of the answer. 20,000, yeah, this is 20,160. Okay, going to go back to the question. Find the number of different ways in which the 10 letters uh, of the word this can be arranged so that P's are not next to each other. Okay, it's a typical question, but uh, there are two P's and there are eight other letters. Okay, so this is these others are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um, when you have placed them here, these eight, so these are the slots where we can place in any of these two, two of any of these uh, nine slots. If you put your P's, they will never be able to together. So this is going to be 9C2. I'm using 9C2 because both the P's are together. So there's no uh, need to write 9P2 over here. Times, these are the eight letters where which have um, three E's in them. So this is eight factorial over three factorial. So 9C2 into this, so nine, 9C2 so times 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial. That is 241920, Hannah. 241920. And we should confirm. Yes, beta? Say, I don't get it why we can't use 9P2. Because beta, E's are the same, Naya. These are not the E's of two different colors or these are not two people from 11E or any section. So uh, there is no uh, sense in making, in choosing uh, two E's, okay, na? out of the two, okay? Yeah. So they are same. If these were, the E's were, had different colors, then you could write, uh, like you see, uh, Keeping blue on one side and red on one side is different on red and one on one side and B on the other side. But if they're both are the same, so it, it's going to not going to make any sense here. Okay, na? So this is going to be E, E, that's it. E, E. Okay? Acha bacho. Now let's move on to the C part. It says find the probability. Now, I, when I was doing this with the uh, uh, other group, I totally ignore this probability. It's asking for the probability that a randomly chosen arrangement of the 10 letters of the word shopkeeper has an E at the beginning and E at the end. Okay. So I was excited to see that, oh, this is such easy question here. You know, you have E fixed here. You have E fixed here. You have eight letters inside here with two P's being repeated. So this is eight factorial over two factorial. This is the number of situations where you have E's at the end. Out of the total situations, 10 factorial over uh, 2 factorial into 3 factorial. This will give you the answer, the probability that you have the situations where, you know, you have E's at the end. Okay? Again, there is no need to write the 2 factorial for these E's because they are both the same. So, confirmation of the answer from here. This is, you can see. Uh, here is the answer written. 
this is the answer and we have written the same here eight factorial over two factorial and all this okay now going to go back the last part of this question okay this might test us people uh, okay four letters are selected from the 10 letters now this time we have to choose four letters from the 10 letters find the number of different selections if the four letters include exactly one p is putting a condition on the p's okay but not on the other one so let me write we have p's we have e's and we have others okay there are two p's there are three e's and five of them are here we know that there can be just one p over here Okay, so if there is there are just one P over here, E's can be, there can be no E, there can be one E, there can be two E's, there can be three E's. When you have no E, that means we'll have to take three cards from here, three letters from the other five letters. When you have one E, you will have to take two from here. You will have to take one from here. You will have to take zero from here. Okay? You have these three E's, and if you want two E's from here, and I say three C2, would that make a sense? Taking two E's out of three E's. Do, do we have any choice when taking E's from the E's? You may. Do you have any number of choices to, like, suppose there are 50 E's. 50 cards with the same letter E and you have to pick two cards from it. Do, do you have 50 C2 choices here? Please. No, no, sir. no we don't. We, we, you can just pick two cards with, you know, your eyes closed because all the letters, they are E's. So this, this will not make any sense. But here in this case, you know, all the cards are different. So when you have to choose three from here, so this has to be 5C3, 5C2, 5C1, 5C0. So that will be your answer. 5C3 or 5C2 or 5C1 or 5C0. That is going to be 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1. That is equal to 26. And that is the end of, I think, this paper. Yes, this is the end of this. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.